just a little bit of happy news out there, at least depending on your point of view. From my perspective, it's pretty good news because I was doing some reading on freight waves a while ago because I've decided I need to get a little more educated on uh, the freight markets and apparently freight waves is a really good source of information, so I'm going to be reading into it a little more because I want to at least attempt to make more uh, informed decisions on uh, how I operate my business, but we'll see just what shape that ends up taking as we get on down the road here. But suffice it to say, the big news that I was reading up on today is that uh, energy markets, namely, you know, diesel and crude oil, and well, crude oil and then diesel and everything that comes out of it, essentially, uh, because as of now, at least on April 30th, 2024, Israel and Iran have declined to escalate into a shooting war. Uh, that has stalled the uh, crude oil price benchmarks from climbing up to and past $100 per barrel. And instead, there's, there already have been some signs of the uh, prices receding along with some different markets in the U.S. have already begun uh, forecasting, if not pricing, energy at uh, lower rates than previously, which does generally seem to be signaling some good news as we get closer and closer to the actual summer season for this year, which in theory, in theory, of course, being the operative phrase there, means that fuel prices will be a little bit lower uh, as we leave spring and transition to summer, again, in theory, which in turn would theoretically suggest that uh, even if rates do not improve, and at least so far as I'm aware, they don't show any signs of being inclined to improve, but I could be wrong, uh, even if freight rates don't improve, but again, generally hold steady, uh, if fuel cost does decline, as all of us hope it will, uh, that means our margins should be a little healthier going into summer, which again does forecast good things or at least better things uh, for trucking as we get closer and closer to summer and then we begin uh, the press towards the holiday season 2024 and of course also the election and God knows what kind of mess that will inflict upon all of us on a national and international level as well. But that's neither here nor there. Um, there was a lot of discussion, this, there were a lot of uh, you know, notes in this article that I was reading on freight waves that honestly that at face value they don't make, mean a whole lot to me. They're just really basic terms that are sensible to someone who studies these things on a regular basis, but to me, I need to actually learn what they, what they mean, what the uh, significance of them is, and how to interpret the data that I'm seeing in a way that's going to make sense to me, but the general impression I got from this article is that fuel cost should be coming down, um, which in general would be a good thing. Now, in fairness, yeah, if you're an owner-operator and you're running your own authority and you've got your own fuel card and you're doing your own IFT and all that stuff and you, you, you shopped around for what's going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of diesel discount at the pump as well as try doing what I do, which is I try to balance my discount at the pump with the services I get from a truck stop chain as well, which is why... You know, I always go to I go to Loves for a thousand gallons of diesel in death every month because they have the best reward system in my opinion. But also, I like their showers the best of all the major truck stop chains. So I want my free showers at Loves every month, and with the cost of showers being on average seventeen fifty, maybe eighteen dollars a shower, uh, that's a lot of money I'm saving. You know, on a monthly basis. Uh, that would otherwise be need to be spent if I was trying to find the very best diesel price I could because somehow, some way, you're going to lose money at the truck stops for additional services uh, if you're an over-the-road driver. Like if you're local or you're regional and you're 
part of your business is you do hotels, if you're a hot shot or you don't sleep in your pickup truck, okay, great. You've got, you know, you've already managed to factor in, at least I hope you have, uh, the cost of your accommodations every night when you've got to stay out on the road overnight. Or if you're a local guy, okay, all you're doing, you can afford absolutely to look for the best price of diesel in whatever region you're operating because you're home every night, which, hey, again, I'm not throwing shade. It's just, you know, it's a different different market approach compared to me as an owner operator over the road you know I need those additional services at the truck stops meaning I need the showers the free drinks and the well not drinks but the free refills really also help a lot because now I can spend less money um, at uh, the grocery store to get you know soda and whatever else that I want to have with me on the road I go to the fountains and the loves and I get boom whatever the flavor I want is well within reason but still essentially it's free soda and that's a big savings on a daily basis you know a couple of bucks here and there that adds up in a real hurry you know so it's it's, it's it, it, it adds up but anyway I'm getting on a rabbit trail I want to stay back on target here which is fuel prices coming down uh, the more fuel prices decline, I mean, the downside of fuel prices coming down is that there is the potential that our negotiating power with brokers and or shippers and receivers might correspondingly decline as they can point, look, your fuel costs came down, so my shipping costs need to go down. And even though costs may come down a little bit, there's no improvement in the margin, so we're still kind of in square one. Um, at least until capacity finishes right-sizing, which could happen in the next year, or it may never happen. Or before capacity can finish right-sizing, we might enter into another boom cycle, and there may end up being a, a shortage of trucks compared to loads that are being posted because markets have all of a sudden just completely turned around. That's not impossible. It's not likely, but it's not impossible. Because um, in a lot of respects, we seem to be... Again, I'm not an economist. Obviously, I'm a truck driver. But the, the, the bits and pieces I've put together over the last couple of years is that we are essentially coming to the tail end, depending on who you talk to, of a prolonged boom cycle. Um, and the full um, fallout of the end of that cycle really haven't been fully realized yet, at least as far as I can tell, which in turn is going to sustain the uncertainty in trucking, which will also sustain low rates, which will also sustain um, the continued pace of trucking companies going out of businesses, out of business drivers coming off the road, um, and eventually, theoretically, could lead to the mega carriers tightening up their hiring practices in order to make sure that they're getting quality drivers um, and not just flooding the, uh, the roads with steering wheel holders, you know. But that's, that's, a lot, that's all mostly questions without real answers here. Because uh, trucking does need a lot of change. Uh, it does bear some serious improvement. Uh, it also needs some different regulations in terms of how it's governed and in terms of what uh, rights we are afforded in terms of our ability to negotiate uh, and, you know, broker transparency and things of that nature. But suffice it to say, just having better fuel prices by itself, that will be a huge economic benefit, not just to truckers, but also to everyone involved because... If our costs come down, that means, in theory, prices should come down for the average American consumer. Now, that likely will not happen anytime soon until it becomes very plainly evident that American consumers are only going to be consuming goods at certain price points, and they're going to be until they decide to forego goods that are overpriced or they stop shopping at locations that are overpricing or overcharging, you know, the prices won't remain elevated. At least that's my assessment of it. I could be wrong. Again, I'm not an economist, and there's a lot I've forgotten from economics classes in high school and college.
how this whole system works, but I know there's a whole lot that I'm missing the boat on, and that is definitely a knowledge gap on my part that I really should look seriously at correcting, if not for any other reason than my own personal edification in order to theoretically make better choices down the road for my business and even myself, especially when it comes to looking at real estate and or potentially deciding to grow into a small fleet and start hiring drivers and try to become, you know, a for real carrier as opposed to just one guy with a truck and trailer. But that's besides the point. Anyway, that is, I won't leave you with that with some good news. Yeah, I got into some spitballing and some waffling there, but even so, um, the, uh, as long as we really do see lower energy prices coming into the summer, that will make, that will probably ease some of the doom saying about this year and the economy, but at the same time, it's way too soon to really concretely speculate on which way things are gonna go because even though fuel costs may end up coming down to um, within visual range of the realm of sanity, there's still no guarantee that we'll get back down to sub $3 fuel anytime soon. And we really need, in order for trucking to be sustainable in its current uh, uh, environment, we need fuel to get down under three on a national average. Like three dollars plus diesel should be an outlier, not the, not the, oh, that's a discount. No, we should be seeing three dollar diesel as, oof, that's overpriced, instead of, oh, wow, it's a steal. You know, that's how it should be, but that's not how it is, obviously. But uh, time will tell if that happens again, we'll see, uh, especially as energy policy has to change regardless because without energy the economy doesn't move and if the economy doesn't move uh, no one makes money and if no one's making money the banks buy new politicians <laughs> and on that uh, hopefully funny note there I'll leave it at that moment YouTube thank you so much for watching and I'll see you down the road